Hi everyone, welcome to this video on uh, oxygen content. Hopefully this is going to enable us to sort of see the clinical um, application of oxygen content and how it becomes useful when we're looking at patients. So it's going to be a quick video and we're simply going to try and answer this challenge here, which is which of these patients is more likely to be hypoxic. Okay, so we'll be given a little bit of blood work and we have to figure out which one of these two patients is more likely to be hypoxic. So how are we going to go about doing that? Well, the first way we could do it is we could look at let me just pick a color here. We could look at their oxygen saturation. That seems to be the most common way that people assess someone's oxygenation status is they say, what's the sats? What, what, what are the patient's sats? How are, they, how are they saturating? So we could look at these patient's sats and if we did that, then we would see that the patient A's sats is 65%, that's pretty low, and patient B's sats is 100% and that's as good as it can get. So based purely on their sats, we would say maybe that patient B is is uh, is more oxygenated and patient A is more likely to be hypoxic. So if, if you thought that was the answer, then keep watching. Um, so maybe pause the tape and see if you can figure out who is actually more likely to be hypoxic. So the way we're going to figure this out is by calculating the oxygen content. Because if you notice, the hemoglobin of patient A is almost double the hemoglobin of patient B. And hemoglobin is the key component for carrying oxygen around the body. So we need to factor in how much oxygen is actually bound to the hemoglobin. So to do that, we need to look at oxygen content. Okay, we just did a couple of videos on these, and this is hopefully going to bring it all together. So we said that the oxygen content, CaO2, is equal to... Uh, the hemoglobin times by 1.34, which is the uh, oxygen capacity of hemoglobin, 1.34 mils of oxygen per gram of hemoglobin, times by the arterial oxygen sat, and then we're going to add the PaO2 times by a solubility constant. This is going to give us our oxygen content. So if we do this in, in this case, you might be like, well, we don't really have the PaO2. Um, but if we if you look back to the last video we did, we found that the PaO2 was such a small component of this arterial oxygen content that you'll see in a minute why it's not really going to make much difference. So let's have a look at patient A over here, and we're going to do our hemoglobin, which is 16, and then we're going to times that by how many mils of oxygen that 16 grams of hemoglobin can carry at capacity and then we're going to times that by how saturated the hemoglobin is 0.65 okay and if you plug that into your calculator you're going to get 13.936 okay for your oxygen content let's do patient b so his arterial oxygen saturation is 100% and his hemoglobin is 8.5. So we're going to do 8.5 grams of hemoglobin. He is That can carry 1.34 mils of oxygen per gram. And then we're going to times that by our saturation of 100%. If you plug that into your calculator, you will get 11.39. So you can see that patient A has a higher oxygen content. Higher oxygen content which is really what's feeding the tissues okay so later on we, we're going to get into some videos where we talk about do2 delivery of oxygen to the tissues and that's going to be dependent on our oxygen content so th the sats are important and they're a great way of assessing oxygenation status but you have to factor in what the patient's hemoglobin is if they're satting a hundred percent it's a hundred percent of eight and a half of hemoglobin, whereas in this case, 65% of 16 grams of hemoglobin is actually a much is a higher bind, uh, oxygen carrying capacity. So this patient is less likely to be hypoxic, and the answer is that B. This patient is more likely to be hypoxic. More likely to be hypoxic, assuming that all other conditions are the same between the two patients. So this is just a quick video to hopefully help you work your way through oxygen content and and maybe just bear in mind the limitations of oxygen saturations when we're assessing those on blood gases, okay? Um, again, we didn't use the PaO2 in this video. 
if you want to, you can calculate um, you can calculate a PaO2, put a, a normal value in, or put a couple of values in on each side and see whether it makes a difference. I can almost guarantee you that a, the PaO2 for either of these cases wouldn't make enough of a difference to make this higher than this. So um, hopefully you found that useful and um, maybe we'll get on to delivery of oxygen, DO2, in the future.